Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk about send keys. I'm going to show you how to use the send keys function in Microsoft Access. It is the king of the good enough sometimes functions. Okay, so what is send keys? Well, send keys is a function in VBA that allows your code to act just like someone is sitting at the keyboard. So you could tell send keys, type in R-I-C-H-A-R-D, and it will send Richard as if someone was typing it right in at the keyboard. And that sounds pretty cool, right? The problem with send keys is that a lot of people, especially inexperienced access programmers, and I'm guilty of this, tend to use it in situations that they really shouldn't because they don't know better. I did this for years. When I first started my current database 20 plus years ago, there was all, there was all kinds of send keys all over the place. Okay, so don't think I'm picking on you if you use send keys. I was in the same boat. I used to do it myself. In fact, I've got an evil access stuff list on my website. I'll put a link down below for you. I got all kinds of things like don't use spaces in your object names, that kind of stuff. And I got send keys down here in the frowned upon. In other words, yeah, you can use it once in a while, but don't rely on it heavily. All right, send keys, I call it the king of the good enough sometimes functions because... Yeah, it's good enough once in a while, right? If you want to throw a send keys in there here and there, okay. You know, it's got some valid uses, and I'll, we'll talk about those in this video. But never rely on send keys for anything mission critical. If you've got an application that's absolutely got to work 100% of the time, don't use send keys. It's very unreliable. If it's something you're going to click on and watch it happen and maybe do something quick, okay, fine. Use send keys. Usually, you rely on send keys when you don't know the proper way to do something, or building the code to do something proper is just a lot of work, and if you got some little, some little thing you want to do once in a while that isn't really important, but you, know, you want to just quickly automate it with send keys, all right, fine. I'm guilty of that myself sometimes. So let's take a look at an example. First, I'm going to show you what I used to do myself and what uh, I see a lot of people that send me their database to look at or their code to look at. Th this is what a lot of people do, and you might be guilty of this yourself. And uh, before we get started, it goes without saying, this is obviously a VBA lesson, so if you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch this video and then come on back. Okay, so here I am in the Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you really want to. You'll find links to this and all the videos that I mentioned down below in the description below the video. Now, the number one thing that I see that I used to do is using send keys inside of access itself to send data somewhere. You should never have to do this, but if you don't know any better, like I didn't 20 some years ago, right? It's common for people to say they got a, a list box like that or a, a continuous form list like this. They open up a customer record and you wanna send some data in here. If you don't know how to do it properly, you, could, you resort to send keys. I used to, right? So for example, in here, I got an open customer button, right? Or the double click event. It runs this thing called open customer, right? It just do command open form that customer form. Now, if you don't know how to set values, okay, in a form that you just opened, you might do this. Do command dot go to control. That sends the focus to a particular control. Let's go to the customer sense field. Let's pretend customer sense is like, uh, last appointment data, or whatever you want to open the customer's record up and set their, you know, last contacted date or whatever to today's date. Okay, so now the cursor is sitting on the customer sense field. Here, let me show you. We'll do this step by step. All right, if I open up a customer now, William Riker, click, go to control, sends the focus right there. Now you could use send keys, right, to type in the date. And how would you do that? Well, you come in here and you say send keys. And there's two parameters. What string of characters do you want to send? And do you want to wait for them to finish before continuing on with the next line of code? I almost always say use true. The default is false, which is stupid. All right. So let's send keys today's date. Comma true. Okay. Save it. Let's go back over here. Let's close this and let's open it back up again. Click and it just see that it just sent the keys right in there. That's a simple, easy way to do that if you don't know the best way to do it, which I'll show you real quick. You don't want to use send keys if you can avoid it. And, and generally, 99.99999% of the time, and in access itself, you're not going to use send keys. 
okay? Really, the only time I ever use send keys is when I want access to control another application, okay? Which we'll talk about in a few minutes. But to do this, there's a couple of different ways you could do this, all right? A better way is to say, open the form and then say forms, customer F, customer sense equals the day's date. That's it. And I like to throw a me dot or a forms customer f dot refresh in there. It's not me dot refresh. Me dot refresh is the current form that you're on, which is the one that's calling it. But this will send the date to that field, right? And then refresh the form so it saves it. If you want to learn more about that notation, that forms exclamation point customer f exclamation point field name, watch this video. It shows you how to get a value from an open form. You can also use it to set a value on an open form as well. Okay, so that's a better way to do it, all right? The best way to do it, I think, is a lot more advanced. It's to either use an SQL statement or a record set, set the value first, and then open the form. But that's a lot more advanced. I've got other videos for that if you're interested. I'll put links down below to my SQL and record set lessons. But the one I just showed you, that's perfectly fine. That works just great, okay? So when I first started my database years and years and years ago, before I knew any better, I had a whole bunch of that in my database, right? I'd, I'd click a button, it would open a form, it would send keys here, it would go to this field, send keys there. Like I, I literally had it so when it was filling in orders, it would it would open up the order form, right? The send, oh, This was all send keys. It would go to this field, type in the order date, go to this field, type in the description, literally come down here and start typing in product information. And it worked. It worked fine 95% of the time. But the problem with send keys is it's unreliable, especially if you have other things running on the computer at the same time. Different things can cause the focus to switch to a different window. If another application happens to run while your database is running. So you never want to have send keys in a database that does anything automatic. If you've got a timer that runs, you know, like I've got a, a separate access server set up that actually runs you know, it's constantly running and it's doing stuff like sending emails and processing stuff. I got all the send keys out of that database because if anything else happens, another application pops up in the foreground, send keys will jump to there. So don't rely on send keys. Again, it's, it's cool for little tricks like I'm going to show you here, but don't, don't rely on it. Let me show you another one. Now, I mentioned earlier you can use access and send keys to open up other applications. Let's do an example of that. Let's go in here and in my Hello World button. Right click, build event. Okay, down here. What we're gonna do is, let's say you want to open up another application like Notepad, all right? And we're gonna send some information to Notepad. So how do we do that? Well, there's a command called shell that you can use to open another program. You can open Notepad, Calculator, all whatever, Word, Okay, if it's in the Windows path, if it's a Windows application, you don't need the full path to it. Otherwise, you do. So you just type in shell. What's the file? Well, notepad.exe. Notepad.exe. It comes with Windows, so it's in the Windows path. You don't need the full, you know, C colon backslash blah, 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 blah. But if you're opening something like Word or Excel, you might need that. Okay, and then comma, there's a bunch of Windows styles. You can have it open hidden. You can have it open maximized, minimized, with or without the focus. In other words, you know, is the cursor sitting there? I'm going to go with VB normal focus. So it's going to open as a normal window, and it's going to have the focus. Because if it doesn't have the focus, you can't send keys to it. Okay, so it's going to open up Notepad, put it in the foreground, and now I'm going to send some keys to it, right? Send keys. Hi there. This is access talking to Notepad, whatever right? Then comma true. You always want to do your comma true there so that send keys waits until it's done before it runs the next line of code. And here there is no next line of code, but a lot of times with send keys, you want to send some stuff, you know, do something else, send some more stuff and so on. Let's see if this works. Save it, close it, open it back up again and click. There it goes. See? Uh -huh. That's pretty cool, right? And you can send data from the database here, too. If you got fields, if you do this from the customer form, you could say send first name, last name. If you want to make a little note or something, you can open up Calculator. There's an example on Microsoft's website. Uh, I can't get their example to work, by the way. They got some old code on there. Let me show it to you. 
So here's Microsoft's page for send keys, and I'll put a link down below in the link section you can click on. All right, it's got two things, string and wait. All right, there are a bunch of special keys. If you want to send a backspace, you use curly braces backspace, right? Caps lock, all that stuff. In fact, I had a caps lock video I'll mention in just a minute. All right, you want to send a right arrow, the print, the print screen key, print screen, print screen key. Okay, all this stuff. If you want to do shift, you do a plus. So you do like plus A would be shift A. The little caret symbol, control A would be caret A. If you want to send an actual plus symbol, I think you put the plus inside of brackets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right here. So you've got to put those inside of curly braces if you want an actual plus. There's a lot of weird rules. Again, I, I hardly ever use send keys, but but they have an example down here. This code here, I can't get this to work. I've tried a couple times. This app activate doesn't seem to want to behave itself. So try this if you want. Let me know. Post a comment down below if this works for you. Doesn't work for me. But generally, if you shell uh, a program like Notepad or Calc, whatever, and you use VB Normal Focus, it has the focus, so you don't have to app activate it. I ne I've never used app activate. I don't. I don't really. I don't really care about it. Sometimes though, you do have to put a sleep delay in there because sometimes an application like Word or Excel will take a second or two depending on the speed of your computer to open and if the application isn't finished opening you can't send keys yet because the app isn't done loading notepad opens like that so it just it accepts whatever you send to it okay now again send keys king of the that's eh, good enough functions because that's not the best way to do that if you want to create a text file from access there are file io functions you can use to open, create, write, read, right? I cover all the file I.O. functions in my Access Developer 30 class, right? But again, you got to know all of this stuff, how to read and write text files, or at least how to write text files, to do what we just did with send keys in 10 seconds. So this is, without a doubt, an easier solution to code. And if it's just something that you want to sit here, click a button and put some text in Notepad, fine it works great but don't rely on it for anything business critical all right i got some other examples i'm going to show you uh here for example is another video i did that lets you turn the caps lock num lock and scroll lock keys on or off from vba using send keys okay and again it's a good enough solution if you want to click a button and you know toggle off your num lock key that's great but again it's not the best solution there's Windows API calls you can use. And I show those in the members versions. They're a little more advanced. But again, you know, good enough solution. Click a button, use send keys, turn on caps lock. Okay. Another good enough use for it is to fill in a PDF form. In fact, one of the reasons I want to do this send keys video first is because tomorrow's fast tip is going to be this. I get asked this all the time, at least once or twice a week. Someone's like, is there any way to use access to take the customer data and fill in a PDF form with it? Yeah, you can. There's two ways to do it. Again, there's the good enough way, which I'm going to show you tomorrow. There's the, there's the URL. It'll also be on my YouTube channel, right? You open up the PDF file and you send keys to the different form fields. Okay, that's, the, that's a good enough way. The better way involves some crazy programming and you have to have a paid copy of Acrobat and blah, 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 blah. Personally, I've never done it, but I've seen code for it. We'll talk about that in tomorrow's video. But this is one of the most asked things I get is how to do this. So I'm going to put together a video on how to do this. But I want to teach you guys send keys first so you know don't rely on send keys. Okay. <laughs> So there you go. Send keys. Love it. Hate it. Use it once in a while. Don't rely on it. Uh, it's going to stay on the evil list under frowned upon, but I'm going to update that and put a link to this. So at least it explains why it's frowned upon. And now you guys know why I frown upon it. Wait, I got to change my face over here. So I got a little frowny face. Wait, hold on. There. Frowned upon. Okay. Is that, am I sad or am I sick? Do you guys remember those little labels they used to have that you could put on like medicines and stuff or like bleach and stuff under your, your your kitchen cabinet or your medicine cabinet. The little green stickers to scare kids not to drink the stuff. That's what that sticker reminds me of. <laughs> All right. So anyways, there is your fast tip for today. I hope you learned something. I'll see you tomorrow and we'll do some PDF filling in stuff. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. 
Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are gonna keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1, and it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.